Good day, everyone. Ooh, it's a scorcher. We're out filming. Out filming. I'll just have a little wait, see if anyone comes in. <sighs> no notice. I didn't put a video up today, so we've come out to film something, and I just thought, I hope I made this... Uh, Hey Kelly, I was just about to say Kelly, I don't know if I made it, made it public or not, but I have. Hey Byron, hot in Melbourne Byron, uh, we're, we're getting up in the sort of, or late, probably in the late 30s, 36, 37 I think today. What is that in Fahrenheit, uh, Byron? So we, and also I'm in longs, <sighs> look, I'm in my longs because we came out. Michelle and I, Michelle's over there packing up the tripod. I'm not lazy, she's just <sighs> popping the tripod away. Oh, I am lazy. We've come out to get some photos. I've got these beautiful new um, bags that I was actually sent, which is really nice, um, from a company that I'm kind of uh, partial to. And they sent me out some new bags to try. They're really nice bags, actually. I'll, should I tell you about them? Anyway, there they are. There's a blue one and a red one. And they're by Osprey, really uh, strong quality bags. And we just come out to get some photographs, do a little bit of a review. And I thought I'd say hello to you guys while we're out here. If I step outside, hot as heck. Okay, Michelle's going to pop her bag back in the uh, in the car. I'll take mine a little bit later on. Come back in a minute, Michelle. Come back, don't leave me. Hi, Lester. It is weird, Byron, but it's weird because we're upside down. So we're, I reckon we're about, th maybe getting up to about 38 degrees Fahrenheit at the moment could probably Google it, but it just feels hot. We've come down to this little river area because I've got a bit of shade look, got some nice dappled shade. If I go out there, look how hot it is out there. Or if I go that way, it's just burning sun. I'll just step out into it, give you an idea. Let's see how, do, do a quick temperature test. Hot, hot, hot. So how are you all? I hope you've enjoyed the videos we've been putting up. We're building, we, we almost, I don't want to say I'm going to put a video up every day in, in, um, in Melbourne, every day in Melbourne, every day in December, but we're, we're very close to it. And that's because we've just got so much to edit at the moment. Michelle's good, Kelly. She's just gone to put her bag in the car. There's a lovely, I don't know if you can hear it. There's a nice fountain over behind me. Look at that. You see that? So this last, we've had a really slow start to the summer. We've had a really slow start to the summer. I won't keep jogging around. I know some people get a bit dizzy. I've just got my lavalier mic on my t-shirt. I just want to get the box off and pop it in my pocket, so if I lean against something. But knock my, knock my bottle off into the, into the pond. Oh, I don't want to lose my bottle. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've come out. We've had a really slow start to the summer. Uh, the weather's been pretty mild, to say the least. I'm just going to sit down here. Oh, let me just cross-legged so the weather's been slow 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 and then today as if to prove it is summertime it's gone to uh, nearly 40 degrees I think it's I don't know what the height will be today we'll, we'll know a bit later on so are you guys all busy 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 prepping for uh, Christmas lots going on I bet trying to organize your Christmas presents <sighs> trying to organize your crazy prezzies Oh, it's, a, it's a hard time of year, isn't it? 
it does get a little bit sometimes too money driven I find at Christmas time you know so there are a lot of beautiful things and actually homemade cooking to be honest is one of the things you can do at home that will save you an absolute fortune but also really enhance your Christmas you can have you know some really good quality foods um, I don't know if any of you have tried to make a Christmas ham if you like a ham at Christmas time but um, there is a video on my channel uh, of making your own ham so you can buy a whole leg of pork and make your own uh, pickled ham and make um, you know or, or cured ham um, probably got enough time still to do that and one of the beauties of that is often if you go to a butcher's and you buy a whole leg it costs a lot less per kilo than buying a ham I mean a fraction of the cost so you can end up with your own really delicious cured ham crumbly nice old style ham not one of these sort of like wet moist so soggy things you get in the supermarket and um, somebody's coming across the bridge <sighs> I should be like Billy Goat Gruff is it Billy Goat who's the guy and hello hello who's the guy who sits under the bridge and won't let people cross is that Billy Goat oh, Gruff yes three Billy Goat Gruff the troll isn't it it's the troll there are no trolls. no trolls. So yes, you can you can get, you know, I'm gonna keep putting my finger in front of the camera. Muy bene. Gracias, Byron. So um, yeah, just by sort of making your own stuff at Christmas time, you can get really high quality stuff at a, a lot less expensive. Uh, I think Christmas can get a little bit too costly nowadays and you know, it's just the way it is. Hi Wendy, just a little short one. Hello, birdie. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, not happy. I put this one back. Well, not yet. Um, not particularly. What's in that bag? Is there anything we can sort of have a look at? Probably not. Let's have a look. Kia ora. It's the orange juice, is it? Orange juice. Kia ora. The orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tuck 69. So we got these beautiful bags um, sent to me. A bit of an early Christmas present from Osprey to review. They're a brand new bag. They're called um, Transporter 4. These actually told me they were called... Hi DJ. Uh, they told me they were called Rolling Duffel Transporters. But um, yeah, if you do a lot of traveling, Osprey's the way to go, by the way. They're really good quality bags. Christina, I am great. How are you? I'm hot today. Well, actually, I'm not that hot. Too bad, yeah. It's going to get hot. Think it's not that bad. Mind you. You can pop, pop that water down, Michelle. Let me see if I can get this to stand. I'll tell you what. If I get hot, let me just put that up there. If I get hot, not to worry. I've got my... Whoops get the older thing in got my zip offs so that's a good idea isn't it Michelle I can actually I can zip off she's not a good catch Michelle can't trust her so and suddenly I'm in shorts I needed some longs on to do the filming it's nice, isn't it? You get to see my hairy legs. <laughs> Not the best thing to uh, to be live streaming. <laughs> I do it with this hand. We do, Christina. We've got plenty of water. Hey, Stevie. Steve's cooking. Can I grab my water, actually, Michelle? Mm -hmm. So that's a bit cooler. I can hear um, there's a like a kids' play park over here, a skateboard park with all the nice ramps and things, and the kids are starting to come out. It's too hot though, 38 degrees. Been Steve, what is 38 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? I can't figure it out. It's over 100? Check that one for me, buddy. Um, so yeah, they probably don't want to be out in that sort of heat.
I'm not sure. Christina, what does that mean? Tell whoever is wait for you. I said hi as well. I didn't understand that, sweetheart. Sorry. 93, is it, uh, Steve? So it's 93 probably Fahrenheit today, and yesterday it was like about 18 <laughs> Celsius. So it's it really fluctuates a lot. Um, I think tomorrow we're going to hit the 40s, late 40s. So really? Adelaide's really going to be. It's going to get 40, 40 degrees. Uh, are you a little bit low there, guys? Bring you up a little bit higher. Come and sit next to me, Michelle, if you don't mind sitting in bird poo. No, it's oh, clearish right. there. I'm alright. It's a little bit mucky. Oh, it's alright. <sighs> Good to see you too, Steve. Got Michelle's best side in. <laughs> move over, move over. Always good to see you, buddy. Can you read from that far away? I can if it stayed up there long enough. Ah. Still got to look into that. So we're, we're next to a lake. There's a lot of um, wildlife, bird, a lot of fowl here. Oh, I'm, I understand, Christina. Sorry, Michelle's with me. I'm with him. <laughs> she says hi. Hello. So, hi, Harold. So we yeah we've just come out and it's about two thirty three o'clock I guess. Um, feels more like midday. The sun's really strong, but you can see we've got a big canopy of trees above us so we've got the shade even though that the sun is right above my head we've got a nice shade here so it's cool so we can't we know this spot always stays shady so if we want to come and film something in the in the hot weather we can come down here um we're in melbourne by the way for those of you that um aren't sure we're actually heading up to sydney very shortly yep, soon so we're going to be up up sydney probably over christmas time doing some filming up in sydney it's going to be a great month Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, it would be a good picture because I've only got half of Michelle in. Oh, you're so funny. The background is gorgeous. It is. Look at this uh, little bridge we're sat on. Until somebody comes across here, we've got it to ourselves. I don't think anyone will come out till later. They anyway. shouldn't. They no, shouldn't. Wait. Normally, I wouldn't think anyone, because at this sort of temperature, it's in the sort of mid 90s Fahrenheit, um, late 30s uh, Celsius, you wouldn't get many people out but it hasn't, we haven't had days and days of this yet so it's not super hot in the houses and things so no people probably don't think it's hot is as hot as it is we, we've had a very long cold well not cold <laughs> by european standards or american standards but we've had a, a long sort of damp a little bit miserable um spring and suddenly it's gone from being sort of 18 degrees celsius to being um 38 degrees so it's, it, it's hot but I'm surprised to see the kids out there because without lots of sun cream on today you shouldn't be out yep. you shouldn't be out in this no hats what are you up to Steve got good things planned for Christmas I'm sure most of you know Steve's cooking my rival channel <laughs> my rival lovely guy we have, there's no rivalry just chill in mate Good to hear. So hopefully the picture's okay. We're not far from, I don't know if any of you saw the video we did at the Rose Gardens in Mornington. We're not actually far away from that. We're probably only about 100 yards, 200 yards from the Rose Gardens. Um, just visiting some family at the moment. And then um, we've got a, a trip up to um, Sydney, which is gonna be cool. The shirt, Steve. It's the Steve's Kitchen shirt. Share the love. You like it, mate? I expect you to buy one for Christmas, Steve. <laughs> and wear it on your next live vlog. I'm not sure how much they are. I think they do free shipping in the US, so it's kind of good. It's uh, it's all on, I think all the details, I'm not plugging them. <laughs> uh, I'm not that bothered. If you want to buy one, it's they're kind of fun. But um, they're there should be below this video there should be a link up there if it's working properly if youtube have fixed that otherwise go on to a website otherwise you can get them on steveskitchen.com maybe <laughs> good on you mate share the love steve's kitchen or oh, there's another one that says uh, release your inner chef steve's kitchen i think which is kind of cool 
No, unleash. Unleash. Your inner chef. Yes. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so we're not probably going to stay on heaps of time. Now Steve does some good live chats. He goes, I haven't seen one recently, Steve, because you stay on for so long. <laughs> I will do, Mark. I've got plenty of, oh, Mac, sorry. Plenty of, um, well, actually not much water left. It's all right, there's a bubbler just across there. You can fill up. It is so, so hot today. Actually, I'm, I'm quite cool. I just sit off my, my trouser legs, so I've got my got my shorts on now but I was wearing the long um, the long version of these trousers just to do uh, a little bit of filming I wanted um, my legs covered up not that my legs aren't gorgeous look at those her legs Got a bit of color on them <laughs> she's not saying anything no, I don't blame you making chicken wings oh nice yum Spicy chicken wings. Yum yum. Uh, Atlanta, buddy. Yeah, easy, Tiger. Atlanta, buddy. We will get there. We've got a lot on next year. I'm not even sure we can get to the US. Um, to be honest, if we do everything we've got planned next year, and plans for Michelle and I are pretty flexible, but if we get everything on, we probably won't get to the US. But it's but, on the list. But it's on the list to actually spend a big chunk of time in the US, so we will get there. So, and you know, Steve, one day we're gonna to get together and do something. If you're not too exhausted from being a, a dad, don't you go having any more children, mate. It's hard work. Fun, but hard work. It's fun. It is fun, but hard work. Particularly at your age, Steve. You're an old man now. <laughs> <laughs> good. It's always good times, mate. Kids, best best time to your <laughs> best time of your life. Well, actually, it's all good. It's all good times, really. As long as you stay happy and healthy, it's all good times. So what is everybody up to? Now I know some people watch this after and wonder, what is Steve doing outside, sat on a bridge, like Billy Goat Gruff, guarding the crossing in 38 degrees Celsius? Well, we've just come out to sit out here and do a little review of some nice bags, a little Christmas present that's been sent to me from um, from this company, Osprey. They're really, really nice bags. Steve, if you ever get the opportunity, you need some sort of like cabin bags. These guys, they're really good. Osprey are fantastic. They're so well made. Um, and they've just bought out a new range of um, uh, rolling, rolling duffel bags. So they're like a, a, a check-on bag that you can take on the plane and they actually do bigger versions as well, but it's a, a check-on size carry bag on. that will carry on. I call it check-on. Michelle keeps correcting me to carry on. I don't care. I know. I call it check-on. I, I say check-on as well, but people get confused. Well, it's a 40 litre. It's one you can take with you in the plane. That's See, what we that's need. See, that's a lot of, that's <laughs> a a lot lot of words work. for one <laughs> meaning. My water. Check-on. 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 Check-on, Steve. <laughs> So it's one, it's, it's, it's actually quite big. Push it over here a little bit so it's, it's actually quite big. Um, but they, they assure me that it's 40 litres. Um, and it's most airlines. I think some of the very budget ones might moan about it a little bit, but it fits in those little measury things. It's really nice. It's got, um, it's got big wheels on the, base so you know when you I've had them in the past where they've got these little wheels and you sort of pull them on and sort of like vibrating along if you particularly if you get into areas where there's tiled floors or, or stone floors they're impossible so big always look for big wheels um, on any rolling sort of bags that you get and also make sure they're pretty well made um, so this one looks big because our usual 
cabin bags are 20 litres. Yes, we normally only take a 20 litre bag on and we usually pack like um, cart horses because we take a lot of stuff around the world with us, way too much stuff. But this is going to be quite nice this year. We've got this sort of, you know, the usual sort of thing with a slide out. We'll be looking quite snazzy. Quite snazzy. You want me to roll that back down, Michelle, and you can well, sit? I just got out some water. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> the scenery is very beautiful. You can see all the ducks here as well. There's coots, there's mallards, there's a load of parrots. We've got, I just saw pink galah come in, fly over here. Maybe if, if anything comes in front of me, I'll show you. There was a bunch of coots just down here, sort of like making a lot of noise. Um, there's wading birds. It's all too hot. All the geese are over there. It's too hot. I'm not going out there to show you. When we finish here, we're going to head back, get ourselves probably some nice cool drink and relax because we've done a lot of work out here today. Exhausting, isn't it, Michelle? <laughs> Our workload is oh, so heavy. Too much, too much. Yeah. Full on. Full on. Had to carry those bags almost five meters. Not good, you know. Get Michelle to carry them back. So, um, yes, we a little bit again about for, for sort of uh, fear of repeating myself. We shall be in Sydney over Christmas, Sydney, Australia. So that's going to be exciting. We should be able to get out and uh, show you the sights and sounds of some of the areas around Sydney. Um, we shall, I'm pretty sure we're going to be in Tasmania. I mean, we haven't bought the tickets, so the plan is we'll be in Tasmania in the early part of the next year. Yeah, and then there's some exciting trips planned uh, after that. Hey, Jan. Do you know what, um, Kelly, I could do with going back to that ice cream shop we went to last week and getting one of those big ice creams, but it's about an hour and a half drive away, so probably I won't. But they were nice, you know. They had 30 different flavours, and they had all the flavours I liked, sort of salted rock caramel, old English toffee. Um, what's your favourite ice creams? Go on, comment down below, tell me. Hit the thumbs up, by the way. We've only got four. Might as well give that a little bash as well. Hit the thumbs up and tell me what your favorite ice creams. Now I can tell you, I love all those sort of flavors like Old English toffee. Steve, if you're still there, you'd have loved this one. Old English toffee ice cream, yum. They had the rock salted caramel. They had um, fudges and all those sort of flavors, rum and raisin, all the stuff I really like. They had all the sorbets, raspberry sorbets, peach sorbets, mango sorbets. They had all that sort of stuff as well, which I like the right time of day peppermint ice cream wendy you are very unusual i think we always find a lot of people are not um are not big peppermint ice cream fans so if you i would like peppermint ice cream if it had milk chocolate chips in it and not just the chips they chuck in cookies but good quality milk chocolate in there um, but often a lot of people that like mint chocolate like dark uh, stuff like mint they often like um, the darker chocolate flavors and I'm not so keen on that um, oh there's some comments coming up about ice cream flakes strawberry cheesecake yeah there were all flavors like strawberry cheesecake mint chocolate chip and Neapolitan so Neapolitan is ice cream for people that can't make their mind up Kelly yeah, see, I don't like Neapolitan so I don't like chocolate ice cream oh, Michelle doesn't like any chocolate ice cream Steve, what do you what do I think of air fryers? I like them, but I'm guessing it's not my thing. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hello from Cork. That's Michael. Peppermint ice cream. Now the air fryers, Steve. There's a place for them, man. Um, we had one in a recent stop when we were in um, Perth, and we used it quite a lot. But to my mind. Those air fryers, there's so many appliances you can buy for your kitchen that almost do just one thing. And the air fryer does chips, uh, french fries for our American friends, but chips for Steve, does chips really well. 
it doesn't do anything else really well. I don't care what anyone says, it, it, it really doesn't. I know people are going to tell me it'll do this and it'll do that, but it doesn't do anything very well. So to me, you end up with a, a big, big piece of equipment in your kitchen that does one thing quite well. And I can make really good chips anyway, so I'm not sure, you know? Um, and Steve, you shouldn't need a, you can make such good chips anyway, buddy, already, so you wouldn't need that. I, I don't not like it. I find some of those appliances now that are around, can I just put that there, Michelle, in front of me? I find some of those appliances that are around that pretend to do things. I'm going to upset a few people now by saying nonsense pieces of appliances like the, um, what is that mixer that has a heater in it that basically, okay. Thermomix, sorry I'm going to upset. I find that stuff all a bit of nonsense, you know, you can't, you know, a bowl that mixes something up while it heats it, you know. I can do that with a spoon, and I know you can actually blend things in it and do all sorts of other bits and pieces, but in reality, it's a ridiculously, I mean ridiculously expensive piece of kit for an undersized bowl with a modest blender in it. You might as well get yourself a really good quality blender. <laughs> my uh, Joby Gorilla Pod is slipping off my bag. So you might as well get yourself a nice, you know, do, buy things that do jobs, do, buy things once that do jobs well. So get, make sure you've got a good mixer. But anyway, Steve, the Gorilla Pod's slipping off my, my soft padded bag. That's my thoughts on your air fryer. I think it's a great product and it does do really good French fries. And technically um, you only have to put a little bit of oil in them. They turn them as they go. But Steve, don't you think you could just coat uh, some nice little potatoes and put them on a flat pan, pop them in the oven and cook them just as well? I, I can't say that an air fryer could does it any better. One thing I did notice with the air fryer, and I think T-Fell are one of the big companies that make them, and I don't want to bag on them, but they because of the air, because of the air that's been blown through them, it dehydrates the fries. So you can put like a big, big pile of french fries in those things and you turn it on for, for 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 40 minutes whatever the cooking time is that is suggested and you end up I'm gonna to have to move this off here with with um, a fraction I'm gonna put it back down here Michelle a fraction of the fries so you you think you put about sort of eight big potatoes in there for two people and think well that's way way too much and if you leave it in a little bit too long and you have about half a plate of potato, potato fries because it, it completely saps all the moisture out of them. Now you don't really get that in an oven um, because when you put them on a tray in the oven, uh, they, firstly, I think they cook just as evenly, but they don't have the airflow sort of drying the potatoes and sort of tossing them around. So beware of that. But having said that, it does make very nice, uh, the final product's very nice, but I do think it encourages you to eat a lot more potatoes than you probably normally would. 23 in Central Queensland, cooler than Melbourne. Yes, well, Yo-Yo, we have had much the same weather here in Melbourne for some time, even less than that, probably about 18 degrees, sometimes as little as, um, I think it's been down to 13 degrees, it's been really cold. It doesn't do, no Steve, it doesn't do good fish. I'm sorry, that's what I'm saying. The, the, it purports that it does all sorts, it might do fish fingers, mate. It might do your um, hamburger helper, but it doesn't do fish well. And fish, it's impossible to, to mess fish up. And it certainly doesn't do anything remotely like a piece of deep fried fish in batter. And it certainly doesn't, uh, I might do chicken McNuggets quite nicely, but it, we put sausages in them, it did the same thing, it completely, the sausages we put in, because of the moisture content in the sausages, it completely um, dehydrated them, they were like, sort of like little wrinkled sort of old fingers or something, they were very odd. Yeah, I love those little toaster ovens. Uh, li having lived in Southeast Asia and parts of Asia for many years, those small toaster ovens, they are really good practical bits of kit. Um, I haven't had one for years and years, but when I used to have them, I used them all the time. And there's some really good, um, I'm not banging on for Breville again, but Breville do a really nice one um, that has 
the facility. You can only get it in the US. We can't buy it here in Australia, but it has a dehydration setting in there as well. So although it's, it's, it's a fairly decent size, I'm not flogging Breville here, guys. I'm just sharing you what I know about them, but it's a fairly decent size one, Steve. Um, a little bit bigger, it'll do like a, a, a decent sized chicken, probably a small turkey. But it's also got all that it can go to a level where it dehydrates things as well, which is kind of good. Much, much better investment than, a, than an air fryer. And I know one day I'll probably end up doing a video on an air fryer and saying how good it is. You can slap me when I do. And I'm not bagging actually on, on air fries because I, I, we, we kind of liked it, didn't we? But I wouldn't buy one. No, I wouldn't but buy one. It's just, one. who wants another great big lump of machinery on the side that does one thing well? It, it is, it is like, there's, there's just so many um, appliances that, you know, a lot of the th recipes I make on the site, Steve, are, are, I quite often do things by hand. Not always. I do sometimes get lazy if I've got the equipment there and I'll use them but so many recipes need just a spoon and a bowl and people get out the food processors and the big mixing equipment you think oh look if you're whipping up egg whites you don't want to do that by hand it's it is a pain I mean you can do it it's a pain it'll get you you know it'll take forever so it's nice to be able to use a, a hand blender or a hand whisk to uh, electrical whisk to bring those up but a lot of recipes really are just stirring stuff through and you can do that with a spoon. I wouldn't be a great proponent of, you know, if, if I did, I, I have done some sponsored stuff for, um, for Breville, but can imagine if they started asking me to share everything, I think I'd probably get, I'd be saying, oh, come on, this is a bit, a bit of tap really, because some of it is just a lot of tap. I'm not good at, at, at lying about stuff. Jan, this is my favorite water bottle. Here's a, a plug for a company called Contigo. And um, it's old, I've had this for at least six years. It's really getting a little ropey, but it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's got a little pusher on the back there, so the water just comes out. So you can't, it doesn't leak unless you, you push the trigger. Great little bottles. Never gets any sort of funky flavors, never starts tasting plasticky. It's been all around the world with us for at least four years, traveling around the world. It's been a good bottle. Michelle's got a green. Mine's even older. Michelle, Michelle's is even older. She's had hers longer than mine, probably about six years, maybe seven years. And um, nothing wrong with these guys. Not sponsored, Never even. don't even know where they come from. Don't know where you can buy one from. Haven't got a clue. Um, my thick fingers. Peter, you mean my, my muscular, strong, masculine fingers, I think. Possibly, Peter, you've met a lot of guys like my old buddy Steve there with those nice little nimble lady fingers. <laughs> These are proper fingers. You don't want to be shaking hands and trying to, to squeeze this hand, buddy. You'll lose, a, you'll lose an arm. Um, I like the electronic pressure cookers, Steve. I like them a lot. Some of them are rubbish. Some of them are just not well made, but I do love pressure cookers. And you know what? With the old pressure cookers, with the old weighted system on top and you're messing around with a valve and it's psh, bubbling away, you, you, you get, um, who's that just popped in? Did I just see Leslie? Hello, Leslie. Hi, sweetheart. So yeah, with the old pressure cookers, um, the, the stove top ones, particularly the old aluminium ones with the top, they're a little fiddly, they're a little tricky to clean. The new digital electrical ones, Steve, I like them a lot. Um, and I do love... I had a pressure cooker over a slow cooker. Oh, I'd have a pressure cooker over a slow cooker. You know, everybody, the fashion now is to have a slow cooker and you sit it on the side and you put stuff on in the morning and when you come home there's a stew made, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Well, with a pressure cooker, if you get home and you haven't, you wanted to make a stew and you forgot to put it on in the morning, you can have it ready in 40 minutes. Um, and I'm talking really tough bits of meat. It'll it'll completely tenderize the meats super quickly. If you're doing Christmas puddings, you can really speed up the rate at which the puddings are done. So I think um, 
I, I, I like them. Steve, have you, have you bought one or are you thinking of buying one? They are safer, they're easier to use, you can just beep, beep, beep the buttons. The, um, the valves in them are built into, often built into the top, so they're nice and easy. Some of them have multiple functions. Uh, you can brown things off in them before you cook them, so you can add caramelization to meat. Sounds like I'm flogging, um, it sounds like I'm, um, what's that channel? Oh, yeah. It's one of those channels that sell stuff, except I have nothing other than my Contigo Blue bottle holder and a lavalier mic and a red transporter bag that we came to film. Does the air fry, no, I would say the air fryer does not make you lose weight. I was using an air fryer all the time I was in Perth. I think I put about five kilos on while I was there. The problem is, what does air fryers do? It makes chips, makes french fries. It does a few other things, but it's generally all it does is encourage you to eat stuff you shouldn't really be doing. I mean, it encourages you to eat all the sort of food that is not the uh, indicative with losing weight. So yes, there's a little tiny spoon that comes on the top and says you've only got about a tablespoon of oil, but to be honest, if you if you want to, um, oh, excuse me, my legs are going to sleep a little bit. Um, if you want to do really much healthier version of chips, better to do them in your oven. I'm bagging on your air fryer now, Steve. Not, not your air fryer, but um, and poor old T-Fell, if they were watching, they wouldn't be too happy. Not that I care, but... Um, you've had a Kogan one for years, it works well. Uh, do you know what, even, I, I'm saying that the electrical one, Steve, the other day I had one of those beautiful little, pardon me, had a little um, Indian... Uh, pressure cooker you can get like smaller scale ones they often use them in India to make your dials and things like that and they work really well I mean the other thing is you know if we wanted to flip the side of that that an electronic pressure cooker will possibly cost you a good hundred to maybe sort of 200 even 300 dollars whereas a, some of those small Asian pressure cookers that we used to have when I lived in Sri Lanka some years back um, will cost you about five to ten dollars and do the same job, but they are a little more tricky. Michelle's patiently waiting, <laughs> listen to me nattering. So, um, yes, let me just have a little look. You get it, Steve. So the air dryer. Hi Patty. Jack's dad has huge fingers. What was that one Steve said something in car? Yeah electronic, you've got my views on uh, electronic pressure cookers. I think a pressure cooker is a great bit of kit to have in. I mean you t talk about um, uh, oh, what's that appliance called again? That silly expensive uh, appliance. Thermomix. Thermomixes. If you have the choice between a thermomix and a, and a pressure cooker, at least the pressure cooker actually has some function. It, it literally can, can be get you out of a spot of trouble quite often. <coughs> Whereas, um, realistically, a thermomix <coughs> is replacing a spoon and a and a, and a saucepan and maybe a, a, a not that good blender because it certainly doesn't have the, the ability to blend the same as uh, some of the, the, the quality blenders. Yeah, the old ones, I mean, but didn't our parents all use them, the old, the old pressure cookers? Didn't they get them out once a year, Christmas time and set them all up, Steve, and cook something? Michelle is so humble. She's not humble. Huh? I'm just not moving. It's too hot. She, yeah, she is. She's lovely. Head. It's hot. That's why she's up there. She's in the shade. She can see that I'm creeping into the heat. Well, yeah, I mean, air fryers. Let's not go on about air fryers. Ask me another question, Steve. Bat something else over to me. Talk to me about Yorkshire puddings. 
Can I grab a bit of your water, Michelle? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I drink out of her. Has so you can screw the lids off of these as well. With real dripping. How many of you have had real dripping? I know Steve would have had real dripping, or don't. Real dripping. Granddad used to have that on bread. You know, yes, Michelle's granddad, I think my granddad, I think even my father probably used to like a bit of dripping on bread. Um, being a sort of real Yorkshireman. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of dripping. I like to cook with it, but I'm not a big... I can't say I'm a big fan of just putting dripping. A dripping, by the way, is rendered meat fats. Doesn't have to be pork. Can be beef. Can be um, can be lamb. But it's the meat fat that's rendered, and they use it like a butter then to actually sort of, you know, um, in the old days, a lot of families used to use uh, you say bread and dripping. Uh, so you'd have a piece of nice crusty bit of bread. It would often go on there, and the flavours are really good. But it's not my favourite. Not my favourite. I, I, I prefer a really good quality salted butter to um, a really good quality dripping and actually also I think dripping itself um, who said about the dripping uh, the yo bar um, dripping itself if it's unseasoned unflavored it also can be a bit bland yeah a lot of people uh, my, my nan would have done that as well uh, Steve she was a, a Yorkshire lady so she would have had dripping on sandwiches but I do think again it's, it's come a little out of favour, and I'm not, I'm not bothered about dripping. I love using lard for cooking. It's very similar to lard, um, but dripping's generally more flavoursome because it's got the meat juices and things in with it. But I just never really, I can't say if I had the choice between really nice quality butter, you know, from good cows, good from good cream, um, and dripping, I'd always go for the, the butter. 26 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's about 33 degrees Celsius. No, I don't think that's 33 degrees Celsius. 33 degrees Celsius is really hot. That's uh, 33 degrees Celsius is in the 90s, uh, Jan. So we're about 38 degrees today. Steve, did you like dripping? Did you ever actually really enjoy a bit of dripping? I have had it many times, by the way. I just, I just never really, it never really sparked. You know, I love all those Yorkshire um, desserts. You know, spotted dick, um, bread and butter pudding, jam roly poly. I love parking Yorkshire parking. But, or um, well, actually, I've got a great recipe, Stephen. If you've ever, if you've not had for a long time lardy cake. You should check out my lardy cake recipe. I'm not going to be able to put the links up for it. Steve's Kitchen lardy cake. That is a uh, that is a dessert that will have you wanting to go back home. I can tell you that because uh, it is so good, sticky and gooey, and full of lard, and just so good. Probably random, but do Australian eat spiders no not not really is a bit random we need gorilla pods I haven't come out with the right equipment today oh well I have actually but it's just hot I suppose no not really um, actually the uh, there's not a lot not a lot of meat on a spider time you've roasted it got it up out onto the table start carving it up it's, it's not a lot it tends to be um, I do know a lot of the indigenous aboriginals do eat a lot of the the bugs and I think they do eat the spiders certainly the snakes but uh, I can't see there's a lot of nutrition in a spider and I like spiders so pork pie Steve pork pies you can't break, melt mulberry pork pie that's a recipe I've made many times but I don't think I ever feel filmed that's a cold um, cold what do they call the pastry we call cold hot water paste pastry 
to you have to sort of generally if you make a really good molten mulberry hot pie steve you you you, you form the pastry to stand up this birdie coming up here so you form the pastry Let's see if i can uh, zoom in we that fella come back to me yeah you form the pastry I did. I did do it, but that wasn't a cold. That wasn't a, a lard-based pastry. Time over here is three twenty, and uh, so yes, um, melt mulberry pork pie. Then all the all the juices in there, so the gelatine and all the flavour from the juices inside. So it just peeks out the top of the pie, Steve. Do you remember? Pour it in. Just peek out the top of the pie. Bake that in the oven nice and slow. Yum dingity. Ah, missing all the comments. Have I tried baked Alaska? Oh, I know it very well, Kelly. You're describing it to me. I had baked Alaska. I used to make, bake, well, it used to be one of my specialties, making baked Alaska. I used to love doing it. There was a, there was a hotel, no, there was a restaurant in Hong Kong called Jimmy's Kitchen. And, um, they used to do a really good baked Alaska, and when you went in there, they, that you could buy their recipe off them. And uh, I bought the, the Jimmy's Kitchen baked Alaska recipe some years back. And I used to make it quite a lot, uh, so it's a real favourite of mine. It's very easy to make, by the way, not very different. Plowman's lunch, Steve. People might not know what we're talking about now. Who knows what a plowman's lunch is? But your hands up. Your hands up, Michelle. Even the but look, yeah. He's got his hand up. Look, there you go. And there's what a plume. What is it then? Oi, birdie. What is it? Every time I went to an English pub, I'd always have a plowman's lunch. In in some, I've just said something that I don't agree with. Uh, in some pubs. The ploughman's lunch were really, or pluffman's we used to say, were really not um, not great. But in, in a good, old, traditional English pub, you'd get really nice, hot, homemade, crusty bread rolls, really sharp, crumbly cheddar cheese. You'd get some um, uh, br good quality Branson pickle, not that, that sort of minced baby stuff that they, they sell nowadays. Uh, so a good, chunky Branson pickle. Um, what else would you get on there, Steve? You get a few other things. It's all about your cheeses and your breads and a bit of ham. Usually, Steve, I used to go out in the New Forest in Hampshire to a little place that was quite remote, but it was also a place that um, it was owned by one of the big bands. I can't remember. It was uh, like one of the famous guitar players or lead singers of a band. He actually owned the place. He used to do a lovely Pluffman's. Yes, uh, Michelle's just reminded me, if you go in there and they're explaining home-baked uh, crusty bread with a crumbly um, Dorset ham maybe glazed in a honey blah blah, you know, if they explain it nicely, you're generally going to get a, no a nice ploughman's lunch. If you go to England and you see on the menu in a pub, ploughman's lunch, am cheese, and I mean am without the H, am cheese and a few other bits and pieces, you're probably going to get some real horrible supermarket nonsense thrown onto a plate isn't going to be too too good still and never used to get much stilton in a in a plowman steve i don't think it was generally always a cheddar um you could i mean you could i would love a bit of stilton with it but generally it was it was a really had to be a mature crumbly cheddar and sometimes uh places i used to like often gave you a young cheddar and a mature cheddar so you could have the, the contrast between the two i mean if you went a little bit you know, fancy, you could probably start putting other cheeses in there as well. Probably even take some French cheeses, maybe a nice bit of um, Coulommiere or something like that would be quite nice. No, I haven't, yo, I haven't had a good ploughman's in years myself. Um, and that's only because I haven't really been anywhere where they should be doing uh, a good ploughman's. I'm sure there's still loads of them out there. Don't see many good ploughman's lunches in Australia, 
Um, if anyone's ever come across a place that does a really good authentic ploughman's lunch in Australia, I'd love to know about it because I've never come across anyone that does a good one. Hi Peter. Yes, it's, it is, can you see, I'm sweating. It's hot, it's gorgeous today. We're very lucky. Pardon me? I've moved, it's getting hot. Are you getting hot? I'm starting to get a bit in the sun. I've got to be careful because the, the, the ducks poop everywhere on this, this, um, they use this bridge. They use this bridge and they, they poop everywhere. I don't really want to get my trousers covered in duck poo. It's not a good look, Steve. It's not a good look. In Devon, it's Stilton. No, it's not, Steve. No, it's not. I've been to Devon many times. <laughs> Silly bugger. <laughs> you might have found a place in De Devon that used Stilton. It's, it's not the traditional cheese to have with a ploughman's because it, you want the cheeses that kind of complement. You see, your Stilton re really goes well with uh, some meat dishes. It also goes good with crackers and things like that. But when you're, when you're having something that's going with your, your Branston pickles, your good pickles, pickled onions, pickle lilies, things like that, your Stilton doesn't kind of work that well with it, Steve. So... Um, Yeah, they probably do do it down in South Devon, mate. They're not too bright down there. <sighs> Torquay? Do you know what, Steve? Talking of Torquay and Devon, don't they do some really good clotted cream down that way? Devonshire clotted cream teas. Oh, man, you can't beat it. Ice creams. Yeah, ice creams. We used to go to a place. It wasn't in... It was in Cornwall. It's that little town we went to when we were younger that... No, I can't remember the name of it, but they used to have like just a plain vanilla ice cream, but a homemade vanilla ice cream. Nothing with fancy French vanilla beans in, just a regular vanilla ice cream. But they also had a great big tub of clotted cream. And um, what they they used to serve the ice cream as a, any good uh, um, ice cream shop would do in that part of the world. I won't say because the Italians don't serve it this way, but with a, with a paddle, like a flat paddle looks like a, something you'd serve rice with maybe and they'd sort of paddle up the ice cream till it get nice, nice and soft and then they'd dip the paddle into the clotted cream which was all dark and buttery and they'd mix it around and then they sort of scoop it onto the side let me just put this uh, there I can't show you with one hand tied behind my back and they'd scoop it onto the side of the cone just possibly one of the nicest ice creams I've ever had So, yes, Pamela, one day I'll do a ploughman's lunch. I'll do it with Steve and I can teach him why he shouldn't be having Stilton with it. Silly boy. <laughs> hey, DGS, thank you very much. I'm only teasing you, Steve. If you want Stilton with your ploughman's lunch, mate, clearly you've got to go to, to um, Torquay in Devon. And you get a nice crumbly cheddar in there. You see, once you get down also towards Devon, you're getting towards the Cheddar Gorges. So, I don't think most... Is, is Cheddar in, in, in Dorset or uh, or is it... Uh, so, that is Somerset. So, you end up that part of the country, that is where they make all the very, 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 very best of the crumbly mature Cheddar cheeses. So they might get, take a little bit of offence. Now your Stiltons come from up north, don't they, Steve? Midlands? Not sure. They have an ice cream called Kelly's Clotted Cream Ice Cream. I'm sure they do, Kelly. That's what I would call it if I made it. <laughs> so, um... Oh, I'm staying on longer than I thought we were only get my phone's getting hot Steve Kelly Jan Erica hello Erica I can see you there sorry I'm flicking up seeing if anyone's coming that I've missed Steve other Steve old Peter yo-yo anybody that's in 
my phone is getting a bit hot because it was in the sun. Super, super hot. So, Steve, shout out to my new t-shirts. I've got another one um, on the way to me. It's in a nice, uh, like a really bright yellow. What's that yellow called? Gold. Gold. I've got a gold one of these coming. Because I thought I wanted something a little bit brighter. You send it across to me on Instagram, Kelly. Kelly, that'd be cool. Kelly's clotted cream ice cream. Yum, yum. Mind you, it better be yum, yum. Will it come up to, um, will it come up to uh, what I had down in uh, Devon all those years ago? I'm sure it probably will. We've got a unicorn flavored golden daytime. Do you mean the golden gay time? Go yeah, yeah. Golden gay time is a, uh, an, a is an Aussie uh, paddle, pop. paddle pop ice cream. Great name. You've got to remember the word gay well pre predates um, its current meaning. It's a happy time. It, gay actually. I'm sure most of you know. I'm not going to teach my grandmother how to suck eggs, but gay meant just to be happy and light-hearted and jolly in the old days. So back, back when the ice cream golden gay time came out, it was, uh, it was much stored having a gay time. It was, meant a different thing. But we still have it here. We have some odd-named odd um, products in Australia, which wouldn't probably do so well overseas just because of their names. Cody, you're, you're, you're right. There it goes. Bang. Wouldn't it have been nice, Cody, if we could have just had maybe three or four weeks at about 23 degrees or 24 degrees, 25, perfect, maybe even 20, 28, my optimum temperature. But you're right. Melbourne goes from sort of, um, it goes from 13 degrees and everybody's trying to look for thermal socks to wear to uh, 40 degrees. Bang, as you say, Cody, did. What do I think about the Great British Chippy? Is that actually, you mean, is that actually, um, yeah, I've got some links, DJS, for some of the, the some of the uh, chef jackets. Uh, I'll, I'll get Michelle to put some links later on on the video. Chippies, you mean just like the general that like uh, who's who's that famous um, chippy up north? What was that? Uh, Harry Ram, Ram. Ha Harry Ramsons. Yeah. My far my feather my father used to always like Harry Ramsons, but he always think he, he always thought they weren't the best fish and chip shops up north. He reckoned there were a lot better ones, and then we end up having a Harry Ramsons in Hong Kong. Um, uh, they opened their own. They've got branches all over the world now, Steve. And I tell you what, Harry Ramsons in Hong Kong did rubbish fish and chips. Really, I mean, quite rubbish fish and chips. They were okay, if you like that commercial sort of thing. But I, you can't beat really good fish and chip shops. But the problem is that, again, there are a lot of fish and chip shops that do, you know, way too much. I don't like batter. I don't like it to be all batter and no fish if I'm going to have fish and chips. Actually, your Aussie fish and chip shops are pretty good. We went to uh, Lang Lang's fish and chip shop. Oh, Lang Lang nice. fish and chip shop was really good. Um, we also found one in uh, Turidan. There was a video I put up, I think, a couple of days ago, and there was a town called Turidan. Had a beautiful fish and chip shops. Um, it was actually uh, owned by a couple that came over from... Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Poland. So yeah, we have some really, really good fishing shops, but what do I think of them? Um, I think they're great. I've never really seen proper, really good fish and chip shops in the US, so a lot of you haven't got a clue possibly what, what we're on about, but um, fish and chip shops, they're a sort of staple. I'm just gonna take this out of my pocket. I'm, trying, I'm wriggling around, I'm gonna take this off because it's getting a bit sweaty and hot. Cody, we love our, our fish and chip shops over here. In Australia, we've got some really good ones. 
the Kiwis also have some really good fish and chip shops. All comes from the tradition of, of, of originally the, the, the original um, people that were here were from, from the UK and they brought that tradition with them of pies and fish and chip shops. But I think we, have, we still have some of the best fish and chip shops that could easily rival anything from, um, from the British fish and chip shops easily. Yeah, the, I don't think the Scottish actually really want to claim the deep fried Mars bar, Steve. I think it's not one of the sort of culinary delights that any Scotsman would sort of say, ah, yeah, that's ours. Well, you know, maybe they, maybe they would. Okay, so we're up. So I'm just trying to uh, adjust the camera a little bit so you can still see my beautiful face. <sighs> hey, Boda, how are you? Did you just come in, Boda? I didn't see you drop in. Anyway, welcome. My graded when it was seven. Well, Cody, uh, I don't know where, where's where's your fa favourite fish and chip shop. Let us know. Uh, beer batter or tempura, depending what you're having. If you're going to have a traditional English fish and chip shop, it doesn't really need to be beer batter. It's a bit of a fad, um, but a beer batter is nice. You've got to be careful which beers you use. It's just adding. Um, you know, uh, extra flavour in there. If you just go and use cheap lagers and things, you might as well just use water. Hope you agree, Steve. I mean, if you're going to do a really good beer batter, go for a really good core, good maybe Newcastle Brown Ale, maybe one of the old, uh, heck, you know, Hen's Tooth, some good, nice ale makes a really good batter. Um, I think when I did a, uh, I did a, a brownie on my channel once and I think I used for a nice brown ale adds all the flavor to it but if you're just going to add a can of Castle Main Forex or um, Victoria Bitters in there uh, you might as well just use water good night Leslie Michelle's gone to the car she's putting my bag away now <laughs> she's had enough she thought I was only going on for five minutes um, she hasn't had enough. She's she just thought she's just been thoughtful. She's popping the other bag in the car. Um, you know, Steve is is uh, anybody that hasn't experienced the the English style or Australian style or New Zealand style for that matter. Um, uh, battered sausage just a battered sausage but it's got to be a good sausage you know it's got to be the the english style sausage generally it's going to be a pork sausage really good quality battered you're right mate you're absolutely right can't beat battered sausage chips mushy pea fritters <sighs> steve i'm getting dry here i'll be drinking this river water in a minute um mushy pea fritters love it uh, Goya Malta I haven't no I haven't I don't think so Boda I don't think so sometimes I've eaten things and drunk things and um, that's something I haven't come across yo-yo uh, curry sauce another thing we we get in some parts of Australia, and you get a lot in the UK, is chips in curry sauce. It's, it probably is about as close as you can get to the Canadian poutine. I love really good quality chips. They've got to be proper potatoes. They've got to be chopped, you know, potatoes, not those sort of frozen sort of reconstituted mush. And they've got to be then, they've got to be cooked and then put with a really good curry sauce. It's a meal in itself. Actually, we're going to, I think we're going to have, um, chips tonight from the local chippy so what we'll have with it I'm not sure the other thing I like Steve I don't know if any of you have got an opinion on it but eggs and chips hello Chris the butcher how are you buddy Christy thinks you're crazy mushy peas Steve you can't can't beat mushy peas lad they're right good you know for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, um, we have a, you maybe do, you maybe know what I'm on about, but we have peas in England called mushy peas. They're basically uh, like a 
generally like a marrow fat pea or a good quality pea. They're not the little garden peas, but they're cooked till they're overcooked and then they go to a mushy sort of consistency. A little bit of seasoning, a little bit of pepper in there, a little bit of butter if you like. And um, mushy, peas. mushy peas, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mushy peas generally are sold in tins in the UK, so you can get them here also in Australia in tins. If you haven't had mushy peas, I'm not going to pretend it's some sort of gastronomical delight that you're going to say, wow, where, where have these been all my life? I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but you may well like them. You might be surprised. And, and, in, and in, you, in England, um, sorry, there's lots of questions coming up I'm missing. Um, in England, um, they tend to make like fritters, so mushy pea fritters. So they actually dip them in a batter. They freeze the mushy peas first into a, like a ball. They dip it into the batter and they deep fry it and you have that. And there was a time almost nobody would pop into a fish and chip shop and get fish and chips and not have a, a pea fritter. Or another one, Steve, I don't know if you recall, is a baked bean fritter. Um, anyway, I'm losing it now. Talking about all sorts of nonsense. Steve will be on the wine gummers again, talking about some random brand of wine gums that uh, nobody's, heard nobody's of. ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> she said that. She, she said that, Steve. I like my wine gums, so I've never Michelle heard of them. Michelle loves wine gums. Maynards, though, Steve. Got to be Maynards. Got to be Maynards. None of that northern nut nonsense. Lions, mate. Lions. To be honest, I'm not good at promoting supermarkets, but Tesco's wine gums are pretty good too. Yes. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me, <laughs> but Tesco's do their own brand of wine gums and they are, they pretty, are pretty good. good. You yeah, don't get him on uh, wine gums again, Chris. I never hear the end of it. <laughs> Woolies sell UK made push mushy peas. What UK made? Yes, in their in their international. Really? They don't just have our own ones? Why can't we make mushy peas in Australia? Oh, I don't know. I reckon we, we can. I thought we did. I'm we pretty not. sure that if they sell them, I would rather buy Australian made mushy peas than UK made mushy peas, particularly if I'm in Australia. Lions are a hundred year old classic, lad. <laughs> When was the last time you went back to the UK? Well, back when there were 16 of them living in paper bag in Middle of Road. Lions, mushy pea, uh, lions, wine gums. wine gums. And I know they, I know there are things, Steve. I did Google them and they did come up, but I'd never heard of them before, mate. And I'm not sure why. But then again, I wasn't always a, a massive wine gum fan. That was Michelle's. That was Michelle's uh, domain. She's, she loves them and she got me into wine gums. And again, I should do, maybe between, maybe soon, I bought a Kit Kat. Let me tell you a little story. You might have seen it on a video. I bought it, the, the world's most expensive Kit Kat. I mean, believe it or not, it's $15 for one Kit Kat. But it's made, Steve, Chris, who, who's still in? Who's still in? Kelly's still in? It is made with a new, newly discovered... Hey, the real music master's in. Newly discovered cocoa or chocolate that's, that's brand new. It's the first... Yeah, $15 for a Kit Kat, Steve. But it's, but it's special. It's, it's a, eight fingers. Yeah, it's got eight, eight fingers. I <laughs> know, oh, 50. So I've got it. I've got it back home. I haven't eaten it yet. I haven't even tried it. $15 for a Kit Kat. I have even had a nibble of it yet because I wanted to share it with you guys one day. And um, it's, uh, it's a brand new chocolate. And basically this chocolate is pink, but naturally pink. It's not coloured pink. No, it's not gold, Steve. It's pink, I just said. Pay attention. <laughs> Keep up. So um, it's pink. It's a naturally coloured pink chocolate. And I believe... I don't know what the flavour's like, to be honest. I haven't tried it, but I have got one. I've invested all my children's inheritance, inheritance in this um, 
in this Kit Kat. And uh, I want to share it with you one day. Well, not actually, I'm not going to let you have any. If you were near me, you'd have to wrestle it out me. You wouldn't actually, but I'd like to show you and explain to you what it tastes like. You're not getting any. We've you want, if you want a Kit Kat, chocolate, we? we have coveted it. If you want one, you'll have to get your own. So it's um, the chocolate, the, the cocoa itself, I think, is from somewhere in South America. But the, the, the cunning people that have come up with this, I think, are the Japanese. I think the Japanese have found a way of processing this chocolate. And it comes out, it looks like you'd expect, like, because, you know, white chocolate is not really a chocolate, although some white chocolates do have cocoa butter in them. So I guess they have some resemblance of cocoa. Um, but um, this is a genuine pink coloured chocolate. Or at least it was when I bought it a couple of weeks ago. Probably opened the packet up now and it's gone brown. Probably They probably sold me a ringer. But probably somebody in... Um, it was actually a genuine Kit Kat store, but maybe they sold me a ringer and said, oh, let's, today let's pretend... It wasn't April the 1st, was it? No, it wasn't no, April the 1st. I haven't had it quite that long. And yeah, the flavour is supposed to have a sort of slight raspberry flavour. Really looking forward to it. Anyway, you were saying why you got onto a Kit Kat, because you said maybe in a soon, and then you never finished what you were saying. Yeah, doesn't matter, nobody cares. Okay. They don't want to know the end of my sentences, otherwise I'd always remember to say them. This is true. This is true. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try and eat it live on or live or at least do a video now probably live that'd be kind of cool but you'll have to hit the bell don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified it better be for 15 it's called a ruby kit kat that's right Boda. it's called a ruby kit kat and by the time i actually get let me just put this down here do a little adjustment a little bit of adjustment to the old screen by the time i get to open it they probably have used up the very, see what I'm hoping, they'll have used up the very last of these brand new cocoa beans they've discovered somewhere in deepest, darkest Peru. And they won't be able to make them anymore. And my $15 Kit Kat will be worth $1,000 because nobody else, they'll have used up the last of them. Plus one for the Cherry Ripe or the Bounty. That's, you can't do it Either or, we're gonna have a vote. Okay, thumbs up for the cherry ripe. Oh, it's, it's coming loose. I think. I'm gonna have to wiggle you around again. Excuse me, ladies and jelly spoons. Well, cherry ripes are dark chocolate, aren't they? I love cherry ripe, so I don't like dark chocolate, but I do love a cherry ripe. But I do believe they do a cherry ripe with a milk chocolate occasionally. Do they? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Does anybody like the cherry ripe? Uh, okay, type one for cherry ripe and two for bounty. There you go. <laughs> Worked out the voting. Uh, who, Boda, who are you asking has a smart smartphone? One, one, so we got two, two for the cherry ripe. Oh, we got one there. Beverly's come in with a bounty. We're one. Well, we haven't missed any of it, so we are we are one to two. Cherry ripe. Cherry ripe is winning. Bounty. Moonstruck chocolates, Pamela. That's not a one or a two. <laughs> is Chris gone? Two. We're we're even. What are you saying there? Bounty or cherry ripe? You See, you're sitting on the fence with that. I am you? sitting on the fence. Well, not. I'm actually sat on the bridge. <laughs> I'm sat on a bridge. Stopping. Who crosses the bridge? The Billy Goat. What? The little Billy the Goats. Little Billy I goat. am stopping the Billy Goats from crossing. One, the middle bridge. one and the big one. Two bounty. No bounties in the lead. I think bounties jumped Three, ahead. Two. So the only reason you're saying bounty, you, you heathens, <laughs> is because you haven't had a cherry ripe. Now, if you like a bounty and you like little bits of, little bits of. Um, desiccated coconut stuck in your teeth and I do I love a good bounty what's the old advert the, there used to be like a beautiful girl on a desert island somewhere which used to do the bounty adverts you haven't had them but if you actually had a cherry ripe imagine a bounty where the 
Uh, the center of the bounty is pink in color with a cherry flavoring. And sadly, it has dark chocolate on the outside, but it's there's enough bound, there's enough filling, filling that it dissipates. It's very nice. You're gonna love if you haven't had. Yeah, cherry, Steve. If you haven't had a cherry ripe, you haven't lived. You haven't lived till you've had cherry ripe. Is that right, Steve? I think I had cherry ripe Australian. Buddy, you don't like sweets. Oh. oh. Unfortunately, oh, I do. Exactly, Kelly. You have you have voted for bounty, but you haven't you haven't seen the competition. You might not. You might have to change that vote. We'll have three if you sat. Vote three if you sat on the fence. No, don't. Don't worry. <laughs> Cherry ripe fudge. Is there such a thing, Yo Yo? That would be nice. But. You know, I used to love a bounty, but everything's getting smaller and smaller. We went into the store. Steve, you like this story? You like this story? Get your, get your old dust off the typewriter. Let's start writing letters of complaint to various candy manufacturers around the world. Get your typewriter out, fella. Get the dust off it. Get your typing, get your fingers out. Dear chocolate company, dear Mr. Wonka, what the hell, what the hell, excuse, using the word hell, but what in heavens is going on with your chocolates? They're getting smaller and smaller. Michelle and I went in the other day and we thought we'll just have a little, little something because we've been busy. And I fancied a chomp. Some of you will know what a chomp is. And Michelle said she fancied a curly whirly. She hasn't had a curly whirly since she was three years old. And when she was three, Curly whirly was something you used to give your kids, and you grab your curly whirly sort of by four hands, and you eat this. It was like a chocolate covered sort of toffee thing. Steve knows what they are. Kelly knows what they are. Curly whirly. So I thought I'd have a chomp because I, I I knew something Michelle didn't, and she went for curly whirly. Well, you wouldn't have a face. It looked like a child who'd gone to the Christmas tree and the dog had torn all the presents open eating the chocolates. She looked so disappointed. Curly Whirly, it's only about the size of a toothpick. It's like a chocolate covered covered toothpick. It used to be, it used to be like a, a chocolate covered ladle. Now it's like a toothpick. And you used to eat them. And because it was You'd so- You'd share a Curly Whirly, yeah, Steve, wouldn't you? You'd <laughs> share a Curly Whirly and no, a finger of fudge. No, I never shared She wouldn't, she was a bit no. mean. But you used to she bite your curly been. whirly and it was so chewy, all the chocolate would fall off because you couldn't get through the Absolutely. toffee. Absolutely. Now, you bite the curly whirly and it just bites. She's here. It just right, I'll, put her in, I'll put her in shot. It's not so good. I mean, you this, get, this size, I mean, what's that? It was... It's, and, and like this. A curly whirly is meant to be about... <laughs> at least. Inch wide, for an inch and a half wide for our American friends. Size of a ruler. Used to be the size of a school ruler. Yeah with holes in it covered in chocolate. <laughs> it did. Now it's like a toothpick. I mean, they haven't, they've made it. So, Steve, are you typing? <laughs> oh, he is. He loved the curly whirly. Did you do that on your old typewriter, Yeah, but Steve? when was the last time you had the curly whirly? I don't, I don't. Uh, yeah, the, the fudge bar, the finger of fudge. The finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. The finger of fudge is all you need. That stuff. Yep. That won't be a finger of fudge anymore, will no, it? It'll be just have like to a. Fudge now, do we? Kelly, you're you're still in finger of fudge country. Can you have you ever had one? Are they tiny now? I'd be so disappointed with a finger of fudge. When I used to buy a Mars bar, I could never finish one because they were too big. Now, oh, now, stop grumbling! Now See, I've got a moan. Bodie, you've got a <laughs> grumbling now. I'm taking her off camera. She's moaning. I don't want to. That's it. That's my that's my thing. Finish. A finger of fudge was small. I know it was small, Steve, but. But they used to be quite decent. And they used to have a, a chocolate bar called a picnic as well. It used to have lots of bits of fruit in it, dried fruit and cranberries and all sorts of stuff in it. And now all it's got is peanuts and a bit of uh, and a bit of um, uh, like a wafer in the middle. Shocking. So Steve, get and write a complaint letter. Twenty-five years ago. 
actually, well, I was probably about six, so we're probably probably about 18 years ago since I've had a curly whirly mate. So quite some time. You'd be very disappointed with today's curly whirly. You would. It actually, they've they've been very cunning. They've kept the packet almost the same size, so you have a little bit of hope that when you open it up, that the packet will be full of curly whirly. And you think, was oh, that just possibly an anomaly in the labelling that it feels small through the package? But when you get it out, it's probably around about Steve. They're probably around about three quarters of an inch wide now, and they're about maybe six inches long. And it used to be like a piece of lattice work. Now it's just like a, a slab of chocolate with a couple of little pinholes in it. It's not good. We're not happy. No, Boda, she hasn't got a smart her phone with her. No, she, no. She hasn't. We didn't come out today to do uh, okay, a live no, stream. And that's a good idea, though. You could read the comments. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll work something out. Anyway, look, everybody, I'm going to hit the road. Um, it's still getting hotter and hotter here, and we need to go, and, and I've got no water at the moment, so I'm drying out a little bit. So, pence to mix, you could go to the sweets, and he would get black jacks and oh, fruit salads oh, yeah. and all that sort of stuff, Steve. But they used to be half a penny. Yeah, he said he had 10 pence, and he could go and get uh, enough sweets for himself and all the school. Yeah, he could get. Yeah, it's been fun. Funner than I might have thought it had been sat on a bridge. And not a billy goat crossed. I've stopped every single one of them. So, loved you all. Have a great day. There's a video going up tomorrow. Um, take a look at it, enjoy it, comment, let me know what you think. And we will see you very goodly. goodly. We will see you very goodly. Yeah. Is that nice. even a word? Yeah. Take care, Jan, Boda, Cody, Yo-Yo, Steve, Kelly, oh, DJS. I've got them scrolling up. I remember Harold's in there. Take care, all of you. Love to you all. Be good. See you very shortly. Arrivederci. Beverly, bye.